Welcome in, Neesmith fans, to another Neesmith Race Report. Covering all of the series that fall under the Crate Racing USA banner. This past weekend, I had a rare weekend off. If you listened to uh, In the Dirt last night, I told you all about it. I didn't do anything but watch basketball. Go Hoosiers. I ain't talking about the tires. It's very rare that I get a weekend home with the family, and uh, so it was it was, it was was quite nice. I even got to see my in-laws. That was nice, too. Now, you don't hear many people say that now. And with, I don't know. The, the country seems gripped by this this winter. This winter's not going away nowhere. I mean, it was even snowing in about 20 miles north of me. It was spitting snow here today in, in uh, Gadsden, Alabama. So I, I certainly... Certainly feel for everybody who's got snow on the ground and can't get to a racetrack. And good evening, Webb, from a snowy East Tennessee. <laughs> I, I think it it just seems like that winter's dragging on, but we probably stay cold into March in most places. But does it just seem like it's, it's June and it's, it's snow on the ground? <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I mean, it was uh, pretty warm last week, and... Uh, I was getting the lawnmower polished up, getting ready to go, and I said, well, we'll be mowing next week, and uh, woke up this morning, had about a half inch of snow on the ground, So, but it, it was gone by about noon, So, but it's still flurrying out there. It's it's strange. I've never seen it snow this late in March. I mean, we had the blizzard there about uh, 10 years ago, but uh, other than that, usually we're, we're getting ready to put our plants in the ground and get the garden going, get the grass cut, getting ready to go racing. Yeah. And it, it, the weather played a role in our racing action this week, Webb. Uh, we had one race that got in under the uh, Nisa Smith banner, and that was at Hattiesburg Motorsports Park where Michael Arnold took the late model win. Rain outs this week at uh, Clay Hill Motorsports Park. They're going to try again this Saturday night with their season opener. Uh, Talladega Short Track was rained out, and Why Not Motorsports Park was rained out for both the Neesmith Chevrolet Old Man's Garage Weekly Racing Series Late Models and the Neesmith Performance Parts Street Stock Division. So everybody going to try again this weekend because it is the opening weekend of the Neesmith Chevrolet Old Man's Garage Weekly Racing Series National Point Season as well as the Neesmith Performance Park Street Stock Division. And we've got uh, a few races lined up for this weekend. A lot of tracks are going to start the first week of April, but we do have uh, some races lined up. On Friday night, Hattiesburg Motorsports Park will be in action with the Neesmith Chevrolet Old Man's Garage Weekly Racing Series Late Models. And Clay Hill Motorsports Park on Saturday night with the Nice Smith Chevrolet Old Man's Garage Weekly Racing Series Late Models. Our newest track uh, in the Nice Smith Performance Park Street Stock Division is Bolton Speedway up in Bolton, Alabama. They'll be opening up with the Street Stock Division. And then we also have events scheduled at Talladega Short Track in East Aboga, Alabama, with the Neesmith Chevrolet Old Man's Garage Weekly Racing Series Late Model Division. And both divisions will be in action this Saturday night, the season opener for St. Tammany Raceway. And they've been doing a lot of work there. The track's looking good, and I know they had a good turnout for their practice this past weekend. So uh, they're excited about opening up with the Neesmith Chevrolet Old Man's Garage Weekly Racing Series Late Models and the Neesmith Performance Parts Street Stock Division, so all both those divisions opening up with national points. We've got a lot of drivers that have pre-registered already this year. Uh, if you haven't registered yet, uh, wait till you get to the track this weekend and uh, get registered up. Those of you that uh, have already registered, uh, I know that the majority of you, I think I've got about 20 that I got in today, uh, we'll have you on the paid list. And those of you that got your membership cards, you just show that at registration when you go through the gate at your respective racetracks, and uh, you'll be good to go. You won't have to wait in the line and get that paperwork filled out. You've got it done already. Uh, those of you that are going to be registering this weekend, make sure 
again, make sure that the track gives you a receipt, especially uh, if you're racing on a Friday night track. Uh, you want to get that receipt so you go to the track the next night, they'll know that you bought a membership at that track on Friday night, and that uh, just saves a lot of confusion there. So make sure you get a receipt for your membership. We'll get the paperwork in from the racetracks next week, and uh, we'll uh, get it in our database and get you out a membership card in the mail, and you should have that within a couple of weeks. So uh, big weekend coming up, Webb, for the Nice Smith Chevrolet Old Man's Garage Weekly Racing Series Late Model Division and the Nice Smith Performance Parts Street Stock Division. National points open it up. 27-week season will take a driver's best 14 weekly finishes that count towards their point total. $10,000 going to the Neesmith Chevrolet Old Man's Garage Weekly Racing Series Late Model Champion, and $2,000 going to be pocketed by the Neesmith Performance Parts Street Stock Division National Champion. So big money up for grabs. Now, you remember last year how exciting the season was, and, and you know, I guess we were a step away from it now. We can look back at it and say, wow, you know, and it was like a – it was. It, it just took your breath every week. You, who was going to do what? And where was Mickey going to go? Where's Chase going to go? And then I, now we got 27 more weeks coming up. Uh, not only the the crates, our crate late model division, weekly division, but the the, the street stocks cannot wait. Um, the guests. Let me tell you about oh, a couple of things of note. Um, started something last week, and I just threw it out there. I just wanted to see if it was going to do something on our Facebook page, and. and this evolved in, in one week to Throwback Thursdays. We're go, every every Thursday on Facebook. I want all our listeners to go to the Neesmith um, Racing Facebook page and look for a, a classic, quote unquote, classic dirt clip from uh, the Neesmith series. It, it it can be anywhere from 2011, uh, from my days at Old Man's Garage when I worked there when we did the video updates. You remember those, Roby? Oh yeah. It, or it could be some heat races. There's lots of heat races in B Mains that I did last year that I didn't even use, but I have them on tape, and I'll, I may throw some, a couple heat races up on a Thursday, or I may throw a feature up from somewhere on Thursday. This last time, the first two we did this past week was we did the old video update from Penton with Bill Edge, introducing Bill Edge, and I uh, can't remember where the race was actually at. And then the other one was uh, just the uh, uh, a feature from the 4th of July race last year at Penton. So we did two... Two last week to kind of introduce it, we decided it's going to be a Throwback Thursday, so I put the new the new Throwback Thursday logo out there uh, just just right before we came to air. So that'll be pretty cool. That sounds good, and and that's all uh, action as it happened. It's pretty much raw video, isn't it, Webb? Yeah, I mean I'm going to doctor it a little bit. I don't, I can't do a I won't do it like a pop up video from VH1 today, you know, back in the old days. But I'll put a, like a little I'll put a little information in where it's at, and you know the date. Try to put the date it if I long the date when I put it in my drawer. <laughs> I got I got 600 or 700 tapes here in the uh, in the uh, studio 1A here at the house. Well, on the get, show, to- get your filing system updated there. Listen, I've decided that this year I'm going to go get an intern. I'm going to think I need an intern. Yeah. You know, we were talking earlier in the week about throwing some questions out there to our guests. I've got a good one for this week. Just to kind of give us an idea of where these guys are coming from, our guests, here's the question. It's real simple, Webb. Joey Logano or Tony Stewart? So you get oh, All you got to say. So what? Do you, well, there should be a third, the third choice. Denny Hamlin. No, what are you talking about? <laughs> just, just. Oh, the 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 the, the uh, fighting, the feuding that, had, that took place. Yeah. Seems like everybody that I've read has got an opinion on that one. Just so I just kind of want to throw that out there. I say manufactured, but that's that's just me. <laughs> I think I, it just seems well. Texas, Texas has been set up two or three different times over the last two or three years with some kind of a fisticuff, and they, can, they they make the boxing banners, you know, that this guy versus this guy. So it just seems ironic that here again before Texas there's another mono y mano situation. Yeah, wouldn't wouldn't you love to be in the ticket office at Martinsville? That's the next race coming uh, up. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that it, it only it would be better if that was the next race after this because that is like boxing on wheels at Martinsville. Any of the short tracks is is like that. 
It's well, like a roller derby at Martinsville. It's unfortunate Denny Hamlin got hurt in that thing, and we wish him a speedy recovery. But uh, uh, there's some excitement coming down the road because uh, old Smoke, he don't back down. <laughs> he no. don't forget. No, he, he, he definitely doesn't do that. Well, on the show tonight, We've got, uh, of course, we're we're continuing the, uh, our theme with bringing the Rush Racing Series into the fold. We've got the promoter from Bradford Speedway, Mr. Jeff Andrelonis. He's also uh, heavy into local media up there, uh, radio and television. Um, also on the program, Michael Arnold. I'm sure you mentioned in your notes that he picked up the win over the weekend at Hattiesburg. The Hattiesburg Hustler. Hattiesburg Hustler. Michael Arnold, I'm just real quick. Every time I've ever, like he's been the, one of the easiest guys the last last year and then this year. I mean, I literally hit enter. Can you be on the show tonight and hit enter? And he was like, "Yep, <laughs> just let me know." So, Mike my, my is a good good one to get a hold of. Looking forward to talking to him. He's he's quite a story, and we'll be telling you about that when we get Michael on here. After him, we'll have uh, Davin Nations. He goes by Dave. It's D A D A V I N is what I was told. I talked to him today. A good good pre interview with D- with uh, Dave as, as we'll call him. And okay. At, and at the end of the, the program, we'll close with Chris Medley. He's the owner and operator at, at Modern Images. He does he does a lot of stuff for the Neesmith series as far as our checks and um, he's one of our sponsors. Been good to us. Um, he plus he does wraps. Uh, he just got into the uh, to t shirt stuff I think. But we'll let Chris tell you. He's a rapper. He's a rapper. He's got he's got a single out. It's called "I Can Cover Your Race Car." Oh, okay. <laughs> but let's uh, let's go ahead and move to the first guest. Let's bring Mister Jeff Andrew Lonis on. Jeff, am I still saying the last name right? Hey, Webb, you are saying that exactly right, and that's hard for a Southerner to do <laughs> yeah, with a name like Andrew Lonis. So <laughs> don't let him fool you. He's a Yankee. Yeah, well. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm, I, <laughs> Well, God, the only only Southern state put, God put above the Mason Dixon line is Indiana, is what I tell people. So, <laughs> but I will tell you, we're not too far off from that uh, over here as well, because uh, the uh, area of uh, northwestern Pennsylvania and western New York is, you know, is a real hotbed for dirt track racing as well. And so, I'm excited to be on the show tonight, gentlemen, and uh, just appreciate the opportunity. Now, Jeff, you guys uh, now and and forgive me for not for not knowing. I mean, I don't know why I hadn't asked you. We talked on the phone several times, but you're the promoter or you're the owner of Bradford Speedway. Well, both actually. I okay. bought the track a year ago, and uh, one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I was was actively involved as well. And so, you know, what better way of doing that than uh, you know being out on a regular basis and uh, you know promoting the promoting the track, but also promoting dirt track racing as well. So, but you okay? So, prior to buying the speedway, did you have any involvement in in, in motorsports? My involvement in motorsports was strictly as a fan. Uh, I grew up uh, in Pennsylvania, um, and when I was a kid, my father would take me to a couple of dirt tracks that uh, aren't around anymore. One was the old Nazareth, Pennsylvania dirt track. Uh, we're not talking about the the asphalt track that came later. Uh, the Flemington Fair Speedway, the old Langhorn Speedway. Uh, but then I spent about a dozen years in the Carolinas um, and spent some time at the uh, Fayetteville Motor Speedway uh, in North Carolina as well. So I, I've only ever been a fan before. And, you know, I'll tell you, there is a world of difference between sitting in the stands on a Friday or Saturday night uh, compared to running the show. And I learned an awful lot last year, probably made a million and one mistakes, but had a great time. And, uh, you know, we had, we had a great first year. Uh, drivers love the place. And, and, you know, Webb, that has a lot to do with the – uh, with the history of this track, Bradford Speedway will be celebrating its 60th, uh, 60th wow. anniversary next year. Uh, so it's been around for a good long time. Uh, the track actually hosted a uh, uh, NASCAR Grand National Series race back in 1958 that Junior Johnson won uh, back in 58. Buck Baker raced up here, uh, Lee Petty. Uh, and I'm told that uh, Richard Petty was up here. I, I've, I've had several people mention that Richard Petty was at that race, uh, but he was too young to drive. But he drove his daddy's car onto the, uh, uh, you know, onto the track. Just wow. pretty cool to think about. Yeah, it's real cool to think about. And 
throwing out those names, you'd think you were in Tennessee or something. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a rich <laughs> isn't that history. The, yeah, isn't that the truth? But you know, just a, a rich history of racing in this, uh, you know, in this area. And there's there's a couple of tracks that uh, you know that aren't around anymore. But uh, Bradford Speedway, it's you know, of course, like. You know, like all dirt tracks, I, I, I believe it's it's you know seen its ups, it's seen its downs, um, but it's moving back into an up direction as well. And uh, being part of Rush this year is is something that I'm I'm hugely excited about. Uh, last year we ran un, we ran unsanctioned uh, crate late model races uh, weekly um, and got a great response to it. There's a number of guys that um, are moving up to Rush this year. Uh, that we're running in some of our lower classes last year. Um, so the car count is increasing, um, and the fans just love it. And I think um, both fans and drivers are especially excited uh, to see us move to the next level and sanction with Rush on a weekly basis. And we also have a touring series uh, uh, slot on our schedule as well. Jeff, on the show with this is my co-host, Roby Helm. He's the voice of the uh, Neesmith Dirt Late Mile series. Actually, he's been around for a long, long time. Roby, uh, any questions for Jeff? Well, you say I've been around a long, long time. I guess uh, the tracks that he mentioned that that he had been to, uh, uh, Jeff's been around a while because I've I've been to a lot of those tracks. And uh, if you're going to be a promoter and learn how to run a racetrack, those are some good facilities to go to. The old Nazareth track, uh, Earth Breed promoted that. And uh, the Reading Fairgrounds track uh, was a good one. And, That's right. Uh, and uh, Paul Cool at Flemington, New Jersey. I got to announce a race there back in the mid '90s, and and after did you really? Paid, well, I, oh, I was yeah. Going to, yeah, I was going to mention uh, Mr. Cool because he did just a, a phenomenal job, and uh, I, I do want to say, just in in honor of of Flemington and and Mr. Cool as well, our track colors are purple and white. That's not for Hoosier, um, but that's for uh, the Flemington Fair Speedway and just in honor of, uh, you know, what he did through the years because I just, I I try to model, you know, what I do as a promoter on Mr. Cool. You going to wear a purple blazer on race night? Uh, listen, yeah. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. That was Jeff. Paul's trademark. He'd, he'd always have that purple blazer on. Jeff, That's is, this, right. is this you in the purple suit on the website? It is, as a matter of fact. <laughs> if, you, if you go to the website, listeners, and speaking of the purple blazer, if you go to the website, bradfordspeedway.com, there is our, our guest, Jeff Andrelonis. He's in his purple suit. I, I have to tell you, brother, that's that's a pretty uh, that's pretty pretty nice suit, brother. For, you know, pretty, whether, you know, yeah, you can yeah, you, know, you definitely can get some attention with that, but uh, you know, and, and that was a big part of of what uh, you know Mr. Cool did out at Flemington. Uh, you know, back in the day, was just build excitement and you know excitement within the racing community, and then also excitement within the general public as well. And and that's really what it what it takes these days is to is to get fans into seats. And and you know what what you guys are doing. Uh, with internet radio is is something that's just you know really you know interesting to to me as well because you know my my regular Monday through Friday job is uh, doing radio and television. We have a television station that's based in Olean, New York, uh, and then we also have uh, eight radio stations. We do rock and roll on a, on a couple of the stations. We've got country. We we do news talk, and then we do kind of a variety. Um, you know, uh, pop music kind of thing on this on the stations, and so you know, one of the nice things uh, for the Bradford Speedway is that we're able to uh, promote on the the co-owned stations as well. Um, but we're not doing anything with uh, with internet radio, and you know, my gosh, to be able to uh, you know broadcast out of Studio One A, which is doubling as a room in your house, and and you know, literally reaching people worldwide, uh, that, that is really cool. What? We have come so far uh, with technology here. Just in the last three or four years, I mean, I go back to the days when uh, to send a press release to one of the trade papers, you had to use what they called a telecopier, and you put <laughs> a right. put a single typewritten page on a on an old fashioned typewriter on a barrel, and it would take twelve minutes for it to to broadcast that page over the phone line. And I mean, then we went to to faxes and now we got email and I mean now we got social media and we were talking earlier about the season that we had with the uh, Nice Smith Chevrolet Old Man's Garage Weekly Racing Series last year how it came right down to the wire thank God for social media because we, we were able to get that information out 
on almost on a real time basis from people that were at the track relaying the info to us. I mean, it's just phenomenal. I mean, and the, and the race fans can get instantaneous, you know, action of what's going on at just about any racetrack in the country. And now we got the the smartphones with the video cameras on them. People can shoot a little video, throw that up on Facebook or Twitter, and I mean, it's right there for you. Yeah, slap that slap that thing onto Facebook, and that's that's been you know another part of what we've uh, endeavored to do with with the Bradford Speedway is to utilize social media uh, to increase interest. And our our Facebook page is facebook.com slash Bradford Speedway. Uh, We're up to, uh, in fact, I'm I'm looking at it right now. We have uh, 1,327 likes uh, on that page right now. And I'd I'd love for folks listening tonight to uh, find us on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Bradford Speedway. You guys were mentioning your throwback Thursday just a couple of minutes ago, and I love that idea. We've got a pair of photographs on our site, and this isn't video, but it's photographs uh, from the uh, mid 1950s uh, out at the Bradford Speedway, a, a track champion with the uh, founder of the track, uh, Mr. Raymond Shimp, uh, is on one photograph, and you know it's just it, it's really neat to see those old photographs from you know putting there 60 years ago on brand new social media sites like that and for folks to be able to share those photographs. So, you know, for folks who are listening tonight, I'd love to have you visit our Facebook page and and like it. It's uh, facebook.com slash Bradford Speedway. I'm number 1,328, just to let you know. Very cool. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, and that's what's great about the social media component to it. You know, of course, like every track, uh, we've got to deal with the weather and it's just a great way for us to get information out about, yes, we're racing tonight, no, we've had to cancel, and instantaneously reach thousands of people. You know, those those 1,328 likes now, um, the the second tier to that is, is like 8,000 people. So we can put a post on, and, and 8,000 people are suddenly grabbing their, uh, you know, their smartphone and, and seeing it. At the same time, we still have a, you know, a track number that people can call into, and, you know, we do a lot of those old school kind of things as well. I'm just, you know, and especially with a track like Bradford Speedway that's celebrating its 60th uh, year of operation next year, uh, you know, we, we really uh, you know, try to have a, a real – uh, appreciation for those that have come uh, before us uh, as well. So, and, and I hate to do this to you, but maybe you should do since it's the 60th year next year. Maybe you should do a 60 lap event for the. <laughs> just, just throwing it out there. I'm an idea guy. Hey man, that's not going to hurt my feelings any. I, some of the drivers, <laughs> though, uh, you know, we don't want anybody uh, falling asleep <laughs> while they're going around. But that's not a bad idea trying to do a 60 lapper. Um, we do have, uh, uh, you know, several special events that are coming in, uh, Patriot Sprints, which is a pretty, you know, uh, substantial uh, uh, sprint car touring series coming in uh, a couple of times. Also, there's uh, 360 late models coming in that are pretty popular a little east of here. Uh, but our main shows uh, are headlined by the Rush Series. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, I, I learned an awful lot uh, about how quickly – uh, crate racing has has increased in popularity just by what happened out at the out at the Bradford Speedway last year. You know the fan support um, for crate late model racing is definitely here uh, in the northeastern U.S. And you got a lot of good talent up there. We had a lot of those guys come down and race with us at uh, Bubba Raceway Park uh, earlier this year when we opened the season with the uh, Winter Nationals and. And there's some good talent up there. I was really impressed with the quality of drivers that that you've all got up there. And, yeah, uh, I that, appreciate you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And they they give the uh, the Southern boys a, a run for the money now. Hey, I appreciate that. I, I was wondering if at some point we were going to have to have to have a discussion about uh, Big Ten versus SEC college football. Uh, <laughs> but uh, maybe we just don't need to go there. And well, well, let well, me just mention it. Oh, go ahead. Let me just tell you how, how screwed up of a guy I am, Jeff. Okay, so I'm from Indiana, right? I'm, my Studio One A is decked out in Indiana University basketball stuff. I got a, oh my gosh! <laughs> I got an oil painting of Bob Knight hanging above my head here. But oh, football geez. season, I have to say roll tide because my wife carries a twenty gauge around. You know, she's an Alabama girl, <laughs> and you've she, got no choice. I hear you. <laughs> says you root or I shoot, and of course I say roll tide. Yeah, that's right. That's right. No, that makes a whole lot of sense. And if my <laughs> wife was. Uh, 
uh, you know, was was holding the uh, 20 gauge, I'd be doing the same thing. So I <laughs> I definitely hear you on that. But I I do want to mention uh, you know a couple of our drivers, and and we had uh, just a down to the wire. Uh, track championship last year uh, that ended up being won uh, by Garrett Mott in the 43X, uh, and he is a local driver, young young guy, uh, but a tremendous amount of talent, and he is going to go far. Uh, but uh, Justin Tatlow was our uh, 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 leader going into that final race of the year. And I mean, it just came right down to the wire. I think, uh, I, I think Tatlow ended up in fourth place, uh, on the final race of the year. Uh, but, uh, Mott won the race and therefore won the, uh, season championship as well. And so, you know, the, the level of, of parity, you know, they, speaking of, you know, getting back to football, they talk about the parity in the NFL, you know, the level of parity that, you know, exists in crate late model racing because of the of the crate engine. You know, it just it leads to exciting championships for the drivers as well as for local fans as well. And we sure saw that last season out at the Bradford Speedway. The crate late model points at Bradford Speedway, the top five was separated by less than ten points. Wow. That's right. That's pretty good. That's pretty That's good. That's pretty good, isn't it? So you got, and Tatlow was on the show with us last week. So Tatlow goes into the last race leading. Obviously, he 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 only gets beat by uh, seven points. Uh, oh no, wait, Messler was second. So Messler was one that got beat by seven points. I mean, that's what we're all looking for when we want. When we don't want to have the thing the thing decided with with four or five races left, like it is sometimes in other <laughs> other yeah. other brands of our sport. Yeah, um, that's, and that, that's exactly right. And and the parity that uh, you know that that you know exists. You know, primarily because of the crate engine, but also because of the other rules with Rush. Um, you know, it, it leads to some some really exciting uh, driving. And the other thing with the Bradford Speedway uh, is that it is very much a a driver's track. Uh, you know, the the success that a driver is going to have. Of course, there's luck in it, and we you know know you you learn that the first uh, you know race you ever go to. Uh, but you know, so much of it is the skill of the driver at a track like Bradford Speedway. You know, this is a uh, you know paperclip style uh, bull ring. Uh, we're a little, we're a big quarter mile, a small third of a mile track, uh, and, and it's just you know to me, it's one of the most exciting tracks uh, that I've ever been to. And I just you know, I'm I'm honored to you know be associated with it. And, you know, let alone uh, you know being the owner and track promoter, uh, you know, for the second year now. When's your season opener coming up? Well, you you just had to ask that question, didn't you? Because absolutely, I mean, you got me you got me sold. I'm ready to buy a ticket. Yeah, come on, come on out. We've got the Bradford Regional Airport, easy to fly into. That's about five <laughs> miles from the track, believe it or not. That that does have commercial air service out of Cleveland, but uh, we're actually fairly easy to get to east west uh, because. Uh, from uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, you pick up I-86 that heads east uh, to Jamestown, then uh, across to Olean, and then on over to uh, to Binghamton, and you just drop down into Pennsylvania a couple of miles, and there you are. So it's also convenient north-south off of US-219. Our problem right now is we've got snow on the ground here in uh, the northern tier of Pennsylvania, and uh, in fact... Uh, one of our stations is a news talk station with, uh, you know, Glenn Beck and Rush Limbaugh and, uh, and uh, Sean Hannity and, and all of those guys. And we also do a lot of news and information. And our meteorologist is calling for another one to three inches of snow uh, between the nighttime and tomorrow. So we have already had to postpone what, you know, I was uh, optimistically hoping was going to be our season opener this Friday night. Uh, that has already been blown out. Uh, and I would say at this point, the, the likelihood of us running next Friday night is, is not real high. We have not officially called it yet, uh, but uh, we have more snow in the forecast and more cold weather. But the following week, we're finally supposed to get a warm-up around here with uh, temps uh, in the 60s for the following week as the long-range forecast. So, uh you know, barring something that's not being foreseen by the weatherman right now, uh, we will definitely be on for uh, Friday night, uh, April 12th. Kind of keeping my fingers crossed for the fit. I'd love to race. If we can, we will. But uh, it's, you know, like a 50-50 and maybe even not quite that strong at this point, but uh, definitely uh, Friday, April 12th. Uh, Friday, uh, April 12th. Mark that down on your calendar. And are you going to have a groundhog roast there? I heard they've been looking for that. <laughs> groundhog Man, that I, predicts I, the weather I there in Pennsylvania. 
Yeah, I said a couple of weeks ago we need to have an early woodchuck season around here and get rid of him uh, <laughs> because he was uh, off by a mile. And I guess the other thing that I should mention as far as opening night, um, we'll have updates both on the website at BradfordSpeedway.com as well as on the Facebook page, Facebook.com slash BradfordSpeedway. Well, we certainly invite all of the listeners in the Northeast to check out BradfordSpeedway.com. If you're a competitor, get over there, race with Jeff and the guys, um, be a part of history, especially this year and with next year being the 60th, be a part of that 60 years. Next year, go over there and see them and celebrate with them. Jeff, it, it turned in a little longer than I thought it would turn into, but uh, you had fun. Hey, I had a great time, and thanks again for the invitation and uh, the opportunity to talk with you. Look forward to talking with you again over the course of the season. All right, and also remind all the drivers that uh, we will be calling on, a, uh, you know, when they get one of them get to win. We can't talk to every track every week, but we're going to try to to mix it up as much as we can. So we look forward to having some of your winners on. Hey, that's great. I appreciate it. I know the guys will too. Mr. Jeff Andrew Lonis from Bradford Speedway. We'll talk to you down the road, Jeff. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. All right, let's keep going. We kind of got a little bit of a log jam here, but our next guest is going to be. Mr. Michael Arnold, if I can make sure I get the right 601 number, and there he is. Back at his bird, Hustler. Hey, how's it going? Well, you, you picked up a, an early season, a preseason win, the 747 car. Uh, what what do you got for him this year? Well, I don't know. I think we're going to be pretty good. Uh, Danny Mitchell. With uh, Mitchell Racing Engines built its new motor, and we put it in at the very end of last year, and it seemed to help a lot. Um, you know, it's still early in the year, and once it gets to be 110 degrees every day and the track starts to get extremely slick, we'll see how we shake out then. But we were pretty good Friday night and uh, looking to keep building on the wind. How were the track conditions Friday night? I know that uh, Robert Castor had done the track for a number of years, uh, decided to go racing this year, and they got some new people uh, preparing the racetrack. How, how was the track? The track was good. Uh, it was, you know, a little choppy on the front straightaway, but I, I don't think anybody could fix that with the water that runs down the front of it. But uh, all in all, it was a pretty good track. I know they had a bunch of wrecks, but uh, I think that was just maybe some uh People being impatient, and maybe some of uh, a little bit of people itching to race because nobody's raced all year. But right, open uh, open night excitement. excitement. Right, Op- right. Uh, you pretty much running the same equipment that you ran last year, Michael, uh, with uh, Herman Reynolds turning the the wrenches for you. Yes, sir. We're pretty much doing the same thing. Herman turning the wrenches, and I'm driving it. And Billy Riles is giving us everything we need to race with, and. Uh, the only thing different, really, is uh, the new motor we got from Danny Mitchell. Like I said, uh, with with him building that motor for us, it seemed to help a ton. Uh, that's not the only thing that's changed. Driving for a guy like Herman Reynolds with all that experience, that that's really got to got to be an advantage to you as a driver because I'm sure that that Herman can see things. Uh, see things from the pit area that maybe you're doing that uh, you can improve on or, or try to help you maybe run a different line. Uh, how, how much does Herman put input in, into what you're doing on the racetrack? Oh, well, from from '09 when me and Herman first started racing together, he's helped me a ton. And uh, as far as setup-wise, I mean, I just get out and tell him what I think the car is doing, and he tells me what he thinks the car is doing, and we go from there, and uh, as far as driving-wise, I mean, he taught me a lot. Uh, moving up from go-karts to the car, he taught me a lot. It helped tremendously. You know, a few tricks here and there and, and just a lot of stuff. I mean, he taught me a ton. For, for those that don't know about uh, Michael Arnold and his history, uh, he was involved in a very serious highway accident about three years ago and, and had some very serious injuries and uh Michael, how did the recovery go on that, and how are you doing physically now, and how are you feeling? Oh, well, right now my my arm is killing me because this weather keeps changing, and it'll be <laughs> freezing cold and hot and then back to cold. But, I mean, everything's going good. It just took a while to recover from everything. Um, you know, I went back and had some x-rays done about a month ago, and they said everything was looking good. So, uh 
now it's just an everyday thing. I mean, it hadn't really changed anything. It just took a while to get over. Yeah, I know you got a lot of hardware in that arm. <laughs> yeah, there's a few screws and stuff in it. Well, hey, if we're at a racetrack and the 747 is there and there's a thread of RAM, I'm going to go ask Michael what he thinks. Yeah, he can be our meteorologist there. <laughs> he'll, he'll be our barometer. Michael, how how long of a rehab program did you have to go through? I mean, you, you came about as close as you can get to losing that arm, but you you went through the rehab and, and got back in a race car. Tell us a little bit about what it took to, to get back in racing shape. Well... I stayed in the hospital for about a week, maybe a little over a week. I can't quite remember. Um, once I got out of the hospital, I really just sat around and went back to the doctor like twice a week, and they had to pull the you know stitches tight stuff in my arm. And really, for about three or four weeks, the only rehab there was for me was playing the PlayStation because I couldn't use my thumb. I mean, it was it was unreal just to try to play the PlayStation, and you know you couldn't even do that. Um, and then after after everything started getting healed up, I had to do uh, about three or four months of rehab and hand re- rehabilitation program. And after that, it was just a waiting game, you know, just waiting on make sure everything was healed up before they turned me back loose again. Now, now, which arm was it that was injured? It was my right arm. Right arm. I know I was watching the, the NASCAR race this past weekend, and they were – talking about uh, Dale Jr. and how he moves his hands on the steering wheel, and and they said that he, he got that from Mark Martin, and I remember Mark Martin, and they showed the in-car cameras that, you know, he'd move his hands around a lot. Now, that, that's asphalt racing and dirt racing. Which arm has the emphasis as far as is what you use the most inside the race car? Well, I'm left-handed, and I tend to drive with my left hand a lot more than my right hand, and Honestly, there's a lot of times I'll catch myself with my right hand just kind of just holding on, you know, not really doing much or if not even holding on. I mean, but, you know, I adjust the brakes and everything a lot with my right hand. And, I mean, really, I always have used my left hand driving-wise, and it didn't really affect much. But, you know, after I was out for six months and had fractured vertebrae in my neck and and uh, fractured shoulder blade and a bunch of broken ribs. When I first come back, it was, uh, it was a little nerve wracking, but I I don't really even think about it anymore. Well, I'd say I'd say Mike that you guys came back and you came back with a vengeance because you you finished in the top ten of a pro. And bro, you tell me, but last year was probably one of the most competitive years you guys had on the weekly series, is it not? Oh, absolutely. I mean, any one of those top ten guys going into the last month of the season. Uh, was in a position to win the championship. And, uh, and Michael, you know, you finished uh, seventh in the points last year out of 410 drivers that competed in the Neesmith Chevrolet Old Man's Garage Weekly Racing Series. Uh, uh, what, what are you looking for this year as far as uh, are you going to do anything different as far as uh, where and how you're going to race to, to try to shoot for that $10,000 championship? Well, no, I mean, I really can't do anything different. It's hard enough to get off work to go to Hattiesburg, and uh, and it's only 10 miles from, from my house. Um, you know, last year when it rained out at Hattiesburg or Jackson or Meridian or Pike County or wherever we was going last year, we just didn't go anywhere. And uh, we'll probably, probably do the same this year, but when they threw in St. Tammany, and now St. Tammany's going to uh, – start running Neat Smith crates. I think we'll be down there a lot of weekends. And uh, for for sure, every weekend at Jackson's not racing because um, I just think it'd be a lot smarter for us to go to St. Tammany every weekend in Hattiesburg. Um, I'd like to win it, but we'll just see how it all plays out. What, what's your uh, what's your demeanor? Uh, what level of excitement do you have knowing how close the points were last, last year? Like, like Roby said, the top ten in last month, anybody could have done it. But what's your guys' – what's your excitement level going into the 2013 season? Now, we're pretty excited, and I'm real excited. But like I said, we'll know a lot more about it whenever we get into summertime, whenever we're going to race most of our races all throughout the rest of the year. And when the tracks start getting extremely slick, see how we shape up then. That will really tell how good we really are and how much we've improved. Um you know, we, like I said, the call was great Friday night, but 
Uh, I hope it stays that way, and I think it will. We stay on top of it. I got the people behind me and the and the equipment to do to do it. So, I mean, I think we'll have a fair shot. We just got to stay on top of everything. I got a quick question for you. Out of all the out of all the guys in that area, who 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 makes you giggle a little bit when you beat them? Which which guy makes you giggle when you beat them? Oh, I mean, honestly, 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 I I mean, it's hard to say, honestly, because you know I hear some people say, "Oh, such and such is here," "Oh, such and such is there," and and this and that. But I mean, when if I could go to a racetrack and outrun. Uh, Chase Washington and you know, Mitch Crossclair and and Shannon and 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 that, that you know a handful of people and I'll I'll run all of them. I know I've done something. You know, yeah. Uh, yep. If I could ever yep. go to Meridian and outrun Chase Washington, Justin McCree, Jeremy Shaw, Johnny Stokes, if I could outrun all of them at Meridian, then I'll be extremely happy. <laughs> I mean, it's really not just one person. It's it's a lot of people. We asked, uh, uh, you know, I have the other, I have another show on in the dirt on Mondays, and we asked, uh, and we asked Bobby Pierce, uh, would he, would he take out Scott Bloomquist on the last corner of the uh, of the dream? And he, at first he started to be real politically correct and say no, but then he said, well, what race is it? And I said the dream. He goes, oh yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm taking him out. <laughs> One thing I got to ask you, Michael, and, and I'm not going to stir it up at all here, but I am. Uh, Wait, that's my job. L- Lucky Keaton's coming back this year, and you two have a history. What's, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, uh, we have a history, and I mean, all that could be put behind us, all depending on how he wants to race. Uh, I'll race him just like he races me, just like I race anybody else. Um, I raced hard with Chase and Mickey and Shannon and raced hard with a bunch of people last year and didn't have any problems with anybody. Um you know, I'm not I'm not worried about it. I think he'll be quick, um, but like I said, I'm gonna race him like he races me, and that's the only way to do it. Well, that sounds good. I mean, uh, I think it's gonna be a great season because I know you got the potential to get up there and and uh, battle with the uh, all those drivers that you mentioned. And another one I got to throw in there that you missed, and I'm sure you didn't mean it was. Uh, Jim McDuffie up there at uh, Why Not? I mean, two-time champion. If you can outrun him at Why Not, boy, you really do oh, something up there. Yeah, I missed him, but uh, I remember when he was coming to Hattiesburg every weekend back in 2010. He was the man to beat at Hattiesburg, and I mean, honestly, I try not to race at Why Not unless I have to. Uh, <laughs> that's just being honest. Um, so you know, he's always quick up there, and when he comes to Hattiesburg, he's pretty quick too. So, you know, he's always one to look out for, too. Well, all right, Michael, uh, one, one, I want to say thanks for joining us here on Tuesday night on the Neesmith Smith Race Report, can, powered by Old Man's Garage. Go ahead. Can I, can I ask you one more question? Yeah, go ahead. We, we got, we got a, we're going to try to start a, a thing here, just kind of a quick question. Uh, we need to get your uh, voice, opinion on this. Joey Logano or Tony Stewart? I'm going to have to say Logano. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Like Stewart just—I don't know. My opinion is, uh, Stewart, oh, I mean, he'd do the same oh, thing to anybody else. Oh, <laughs> but you know, somebody young doing it—it it seems like it's always wrong. Uh, so you know, I'd have to go with Logano. I did race go karts against him back when we were in the WK series and back in a few other series. And I mean, I'm gonna have to stick with him. There you go. There you go. Okay. Well, we- like I said, I certainly appreciate you taking time out here Tuesday evening to talk with us. Before we let you get out of here, I'd like for you to thank some of the sponsors on the race car and also some of the crew members that get to 747 around the speedway. Oh, I'd like to thank Herman Reynolds and Billy Riles. Like uh, like y'all said, Herman turning all the wrenches and Billy's giving us all the equipment we need to, to take care of business. Um, I'd also like to thank a good friend of mine, Jonathan Walker, uh, with Walker Machine, he helps out a lot on some parts, some this and that, just helping out around the shop when I'm up there working on the car. Uh, I'd like to thank Danny Mitchell with Mitchell Racing Engines, and I think that's about it. Well, all right, man. Well, uh, you know, keep your winning ways. And, uh, you know, last year we talked to you a few times on the uh, on the hotline when we had it. This, is, this replaces the hotline this year, so hopefully we'll get you on here after some wins this year. All right. Well, I appreciate it. 
Michael, you can catch Michael Arnold at Hattiesburg and St. Tammany's. Uh, why not? If he it doesn't, if he, if he has to, <laughs> Meridian. Uh, but yeah, good good driver there. Yeah, well, he's, I, he's a good one. Let's keep it going. We've got bringing. We're going to bring Mr. Devin Nations to the to the show. Welcome to the program, Mr. Nations, a street stock driver out of Mississippi. Uh, how's things going with that uh, new six hundred two? Hey guys, thanks for having me on. Uh, uh, things are going great uh, so far. I've uh, raced it once, and uh, we we had a good night. Ended up second, and uh, fighting for the lead, coming to the checkered flag, uh, three wide for the lead. We had a really good night. Now, uh, were you catching him, or was he passing you, or how did that go? I mean, that at the checkered flag. Uh, you can. I think they got a picture up on the website, and if they don't have one on the Why Not website, we'll have it on our website coming up next week. Right at the checkered flag, uh, uh, you and I believe it was Metters were like side by side, and I think he beat you like by two feet. Well, that's about right. Uh, we he uh, he started I think second, and I started fourth behind him, and uh, we pretty much ran first and second for almost the entire race and we came down you know for two to go and I said well it's time to try him and I, I tried to duck under him and the car felt good and then we had a caution so we came to a green white checkered and uh, we had a rocket ship behind us also Mike Ladner uh, was behind us and uh, when it all stacked up we came to the checkered flag i I tried low, and he was running high. We came out, and uh, Mike Ladner kind of got into the mix also, came right up the middle for a three, you know, for a pretty good finish. So we uh, we just didn't quite get get quite enough. Well, that 602, uh, I mean, you showed that that 602 can run with those built motors in the Neesmith Performance Parts Street Stock Division. Uh, that's got to get you excited about the point season that's uh, starting this, this weekend. Man, it it really does. I'm I'm really uh, excited about racing. I was scared that uh, early in the season we would have to we might struggle a, a little bit, you know, being down. We're probably down at least 80 horsepower from the built motors. But, uh, you know, I figured until the track started slicking off a little bit, we, you know, we have to work really hard to get up front. But uh, the motor ran good. We had a, I mean, just a good race. The, the car was set up perfect. Uh, you know, I've got a, buddy of mine I raced with, Steve Peacock, he's been helping me on the car and trying to help me get it set up for this 602 because we wasn't really sure. We had to, we had to run the car a lot different, uh, you know, different numbers and a different setup for this, uh, you know, lower horsepower engine. But I was right there with them and didn't, didn't have a problem at all. Dave, you mentioned to me uh, in, in our pre-interview this afternoon that, uh, that you guys are all of you collectively are, are excited for the for a series, and that you had waited for something like this. What does it mean to to have um, a series to run, and then and then the attention that comes with running a series? Man, it, it is awesome. We have uh, been kind of waiting for several years. Well, a lot of years. <laughs> it seems that when we want to travel around the state to go race at other tracks. We're always off uh, in rule-wise from the other tracks a little. We can get there, we can race, but it's always our spoilers are different sizes or our tires are a little different, you know, and it is uh, really awesome. We, you know, got uh, another series here in the state of the Mississippi Street Stock Series that is uh, putting together a series of races so we can travel, and then we're all running under the Neesmith rules. So with Neesmith and the touring series all, you know, kind of working together, it is, it's just everything that I hear is everyone's excited about this. And you also got a couple of point funds you, you can race for as well. I know under the uh, 
Neesmith Performance Parts Street Stock Division banner. Uh, we've got a few tracks lined up. Of course, we got uh, Why Not Motorsports Park, where you, where you ran uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, got St. Tammany Raceway down in uh, Lacombe, uh, Louisiana. Got Jackson Motor Speedway in Jackson, Mississippi. Magnolia Motor Speedway, Columbus, Mississippi. And now we've added Moulton Speedway up in Moulton, Alabama. Are you going to try to travel around a little bit, or do you have a home track that, that you prefer to race at? Well, uh, I've, I've, I live right outside of Jackson, so I consider my home track as uh, Jackson Motor Speedway. Been racing there for a number of years, but I plan on racing at every one of the tracks you you mentioned. Uh, and you know, we we also plan on going to uh, Greenville, Mississippi, up there to uh, run with them. You know, I think they're. Uh, you know, one of the Neesmith sanctioned tracks also, so. And you guys got the, you said you this first time you, had, you got the motor out, and you guys, what you guys do with the motor? Just stick it in the car? Or did you do anything to it? Well, we didn't, we can't do anything to the motors as far as, uh only thing we can do with them is accessorize them. <laughs> we can put, you know, try different carburetors, play with the timing, uh, we didn't know what to run a 602 with a heavy motor, I mean, with a heavy car. We we weren't real sure, and uh, we got the motor, and we took it and put it on the dyno to fi- figure out uh, how much carburetor we needed and to try to figure out the timing, you know, where it made the most power. And, uh, you know, we got it tuned in good, and, it, you know, first night out, we, we just had a, a really good, you know, good run with it. We were more than more than happy. Tell us a little bit about what is a street stock. I mean, the the people that are listening, or a lot of them are late model fans, and they know those cars are built with uh, you know chromoly tubing from the ground up. Uh, what does it take to build a street stock? What what what's the components of it? Well, the components are you have to start start with a stock. Uh, frame that comes out from underneath uh, most uh, almost every one is running uh, either a Camaro frame or a Monte Carlo frame that uh, you know that's running Chevrolet. So uh, some of the you know we're running some of the guys are running a, a old style Camaro and some are running the new style and. Uh, Pretty much everybody else is running a, a Monte Carlo, That's which is what I have. And the frame has to remain stock. Uh, we can we can run, uh, we can't really change the suspension. It has to be a stock Chevrolet suspension or a stock for the uh, make of the car. So, you know, basically you take it and strip it down to the frame and uh, build a cage around the stock frame. And, and this then, would be a frame you'd get out of a out of a salvage yard. It, that that's right. Uh, you know, you try to find one that's straight, and uh, we have to have the the stock floor pan uh, in the car. You know, and then from there, you know, once you go with the frame and the suspension, everything else is. Uh, you know, we can we can run uh, steel shocks. But we can change our shots uh, to run in a aftermarket location on the front, and you know we can run a racing shock on the rear. But uh, it has to be in the stock plane of where the old uh, shocks came from. Uh, what kind of rear end assembly can you run? Can you run a quick change, or could you just got to stick with the uh, stock rear well, end assembly? We- we cannot run a quick change, but we can run a uh, nine-inch floater rear end, uh, which makes it a lot easier on us going to all these different tracks to, you know, be able to change gears a lot quicker going from one track to the next. You, you know, you don't know really on some of these tracks when you show up exactly what type of gearing you need to run good. And I guess that might have been a challenge too with that six oh two on what what gear to run with that thing. 
it was a, a big challenge. I went to uh, Meridian uh, to Why Not the week before, drove over just to test because we had given it our best guess at what type of gear to run, and uh, I was I was so far off that I was hitting the, you know, I was maxed out before I even got to the flag stand, so I didn't make very many laps. Uh, <laughs> being being geared, wrong, you know, that wrong, so we came home and, and uh, did some math and tried it again. I think we hit it pretty good this last time. Well, that sounds good, and then I know you're excited about the, uh, they just announced the I-20 challenge for the street stock division between Jackson and uh, and Why Not. Uh, that's going to begin not this weekend, but next weekend on April the 5th. Uh, they're going to pay uh, 800 to win for the Neesmith Performance Park Street Stock Division at Jackson Motor Speedway, and then the next night going to Why Not Motorsports Park. And then the driver that has the best average finish between the two races is going to pick up a $300 bonus. So, uh, I think there's like a, a, a potential to win about seventeen hundred dollars that weekend. Man, that would be nice. I, I, uh, I'm planning on racing both of those races, and uh, everything turns out, you know, the way I try to draw it up in my head. Uh, it sure would be nice to win both of those and get to three hundred. <laughs> and, 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 so and pick up the national points for the. Uh, Neesmith Smith Performance Park Street Stock Division too. You're right. That would be that would be uh, pretty good uh, with the quality of drivers that are going to be at those uh, at those two events. It's going to be very hard to do, but uh, I'm going to stay optimistic. Uh, Dave, Dave, real quick, uh, just for okay. There's people listening from all over the southeast and the northeast, and 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 this is a uh, this is a new series to a lot of us. Give us a and, and include yourself if you're in it, but give us a, a top five people to look out for this year in the street stock. Well, uh, I would have to say I don't. Uh, I know I'm going to leave some people out <laughs> because there's such a huge. There's a, a a big group of really talented drivers in the street stock division in Mississippi. Uh, you know we're. We're, we're going to be racing these Neesmith tracks. Uh, I was going to have, you know, I'd have to say uh, uh, Trey Bright uh, in the 82 car out of Alabama. He's uh, always tough at every track. Uh, Mike Ladner, who came in uh, third last week uh, right behind me, he's very talented, you know. He, he runs good everywhere that he runs. Uh, there's... Uh, Guy from Hattiesburg, Michael Williams in the 19 car that uh, has done a lot of work with the uh, Mississippi Street Stock Series, getting it started and, and up and going. Uh, he's, you know, he travels a lot and he's used to going to a lot of different tracks traveling. And he's always fast. Uh, I'm really not sure all of the guys that are, uh, you know, that are actually going to run the you know, try to run the series with Neesmith. Smith. So, uh, as far as to give you a top five, uh, I would love to put myself in there. Uh, I think I'm a, a big threat anywhere I go, but, uh, you know, that might be biased. <laughs> uh, that, that's allowed on this show. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of an old guy, and all of them look at me as being an old guy. It's been several years since I... Uh, since I took home a, a checkered flag, but uh, I plan on doing it several times this year. There you go. There you go. Well, we have one question asked for you to get off. Before we, before we throw it to you, just thank your sponsors and your crew. What's the one question, Roby? Joey Logano or Tony Stewart? Man, I got to go smoke. <laughs> one smoke, one Logano. I got. Yeah, I got to go with smoke. Well, well, thanks for taking time out of your evening to talk with us here on the Neesmith Race Report, brought to you guys by uh, Old Man's Garage, Lake Mile Chassis Parts. Before we let you get out here, thank the sponsors on the race car and some of the guys that helped turn the wrenches on it. Well, I have to say thank you, especially to my, uh, my I guess he'd be called crew chief. He uh, helps me set the car up, uh, Steve Peacock. And uh, the only other crew member we got is my little buddy, uh, my 10-year-old son is Nick. 
he uh he kind of keeps my head straight when I'm racing. So uh, that's that's pretty much. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of sponsors. We got uh, a guy that helps us out a little bit. Uh, uh, roofing with strength, and uh, that's about it. Well, we certainly are going to keep tab- tabs on you, Devin, for uh, for the street stock division, and we wish you all the luck in the world this year, man. See you at the racetrack. Man, I appreciate it. Thanks for talking to me. No problem. Thanks a lot. Well, let's just keep moving. We were moving into our first overtime session of the year, which we we knew we were going to move past an hour at some point, right, Roby? I love it. <laughs> well, let's bring on the program one of our one of our good sponsors. Not only is he a good sponsor, but a good friend. Uh, he hung out with me when I had no friends at uh, Ocala. But Chris Melody, <laughs> Modern Images, he's my, he's my buddy. What's going on, brother? What's going on, man? Well, just uh, killing a Tuesday night, talking about racing. I mean, that's uh, I hear you. that's living the dream, ain't it? Oh, yeah, it always is. Before <laughs> before we get started too deep, though, I got to break the tie, and I got to go with smoke. Oh, I knew you were going to do right. it. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go with smoke. I was an Earnhardt fan, and uh, he's the modern day version of it. So that's right. I got to I got to go with smoke, man. He's a he's a hell of a wheel, man. The so, only. Cre- Oh, he's kind team. of he's kind of Dale Earnhardt Sr. and AJ Foyt wrapped in the one. Oh, he's he uh, he is he is. It, it would be great if he did that little smirk like Earnhardt did with his mouth, and that that would be great. So he, uh, AJ didn't smirk. He he just put one on you. Yeah. Yep. That's he right. That's right. He wouldn't have missed Logano's head yesterday, uh, uh, whenever day it was. I think <laughs> no, Stewart no. Stewart missed his head. I think I think Logano and Keselowski. I think they got they got something coming to them. Both of them are great drivers, but uh, they really don't have respect for some of the guys. So, I don't well, know. that being said, now you've been uh, one, uh, our our graphics guy pretty much well, as long as I've been around since last year. I don't know how long you've been with the series, but uh, you do great work. What's going on at Modern Images? Um. Phone call after phone call after phone call. <laughs> uh, we're we're wide open, busy. You know, it's the beginning of the season, and uh, man, we uh we really stepped our, our program up around here. And uh, I mean, we've got a lot of new customers, uh, a lot of existing customers, and uh, you know, I mean, it, it's just man, it's it's wonderful, man. It's it's a blessing in disguise. I mean, you know, we uh we're really blessed to have all the customers that we have. So, you know, we're we're just uh. We're pumping them out as fast as we can, you know. It's just a, uh, it's a, it's a time issue with, you know, a lot of these guys. But you know, we we do the best we can and and get get the product to them as fast as we can, you know. Now you so, know with with the addition of of the Rush Racing Series in the Northeast, we've got a whole new listing base. So what's a give me a rundown of your services of what what is uh, modern? We do uh, we offer wraps, race car wraps. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if it's a late model; it can be you know just a, a street stock. You know, it can be, um, you know, a pony stock car. Any, any kind of any kind of wrap. We do banners. We uh we do signs. If you need any kind of signs, we're we're getting our feet wet in the t-shirt business. It's uh it's something new. Um, I got a couple, you know, uh, guys helping us out with that. You know, trying to learn the process of that. I mean, it's it's a whole new world, man. You know, going from wraps and uh and decals. To, to over to the uh to the T shirt game, man. It's it's uh it's it's a whole new thing for me, man. So we're trying to keep our feet wet with that. Uh, you know, but I mean mostly ninety percent of the stuff we do is, is race car wraps and we do a little commercial stuff here and there, but um like I say, we we've got customers um all the way from, you know, Montana, uh Chicago, uh, Carolinas, Florida, just pretty much all over the United States. Uh Got them all out, and we ship stuff out, you know, every day, pretty much. I was going to um, ask you. It, the question I had was, say, you know, okay, okay, I'm a racer in Montana. Hey, Chris, I need a wrap. You guys, you could do it all over the computers, Facebook, or email, and and, yeah. and back and forth that way, designing this thing, right? I assume. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. They they just uh, pretty much give me a call, and uh, you know, we just write down all their their numbers and sponsors, and and uh, you know, we get their dimensions and stuff like that, and. Uh, you know, once we get a deposit, we uh, you know, we get to draw it on the on the car, and uh, once once we get everything approved, we we get it sized up to your car. We don't have just a generic template, so you know, when you get it, it fits your car perfect. It, it's not you know one of those wraps, just a you know generic deal, and we pump it out, and you know you get it, and it overhangs and stuff like that. 
it's made for your car, and, you know, we try to get everything sized up and uh, get it to you in a timely fashion and, and try and make you look good on the racetrack. So, and I and, and Roby and I both can vouch where we, we, we'll get a we'll get a crazy idea. We need something, and yeah. we'll we'll bounce it off Tim, and Tim will bounce it off me and Roby, and then we'll go to Mike. You know, then we uh, we'll get we'll, we'll say, "Hey, Chris, do this. Can you do this for me? Can you do that for me?" So yeah, I mean, oh yeah. He, he, so what I'm trying to say is like. You know, he probably don't like last minute stuff because we do it. But right, <laughs> you're capable if you have to. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that's that's. Hey man, when you're in the racing world, that's the way it is. You know, you just gotta you gotta get used to it. It's been that way for 12 years. We've been doing it, and uh, it's you know most of the time it's uh, hey, I need a wrap on my car, and I'll say you know okay, well I need measurements. Well, we don't have the body on it. We're not gonna finish it up till Saturday morning. You know, well, I yeah. I got to print this wrap out, but you know, you don't have the size for it. So you know, it's it's always that man. It's uh it's always been that way. I don't think it's going to change. Um, you got a few that you know plan ahead, but you know, for the most part, uh, it's it's always a rush deal, man. Everybody needs it yesterday, but we we do the best we can, you know, to to get it out, you know, to everybody. Now, I saw yeah. somewhere you had a wrapped guitar. Yeah, man, we uh we wrap we wrap pretty much anything. Uh, you can wrap walls, you can wrap guitars. Um, you can, we even do PlayStations. Uh, we do, like, you know, the fat heads on the walls, like I said. Um, we wrap helmets. Um, we we can pretty much, if it's a stick, we'll wrap it, you know. <laughs> so You do uh, trucks and trailers and pit carts and all that, too? Yes, sir. Any, anything, anything a sticker will stick to, we, we'll try and, you know, we we can do a toilet seat if that's what you want to do, a mailbox, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Whatever. So, you know, I I've seen a lot of that stuff on the internet, you know, so but uh but yeah, no, we we'll do pretty much anything. I, I got I got a vinyl liner in my pool. Can you do that? <laughs> well, it's pretty much like a vinyl liner when you get it. Uh it's it's uh it's pretty close to it. Uh I'm pretty sure they make some type of vinyl that will stick to uh the bottom of pools. Uh, I don't know if it'll stick to a vinyl liner. I'm pretty sure it will, but I don't know how long it'll last. Um, but but I do know that they make vinyl for concrete pools. Would it break uh, the machine if I ordered a? Uh, I want a I want a giant Webb Dillard fathead, with just yeah. my head. But it would break the machine. It it probably it probably would. <laughs> and plus, I, I don't know if my machine is big enough, Webb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, now but, you sound like, now you sound like my wife. <laughs> yeah, so we, we, we could we could we could panel it together. We could put a couple pieces together and make it work. So, well, see, I was using that to go into my next question. What is the what is the largest thing that you guys can do as far as dimension wise? Because that's probably a question. That, I mean, I want somebody's out there listening, going, "I want to can do this." What's the biggest thing, length or width, you guys can do? Well, the printer that we currently have is a forty-eight inch wide printer. But I mean, there's people out there that like you could take the same printer. And you could wrap, like, let's say, an 18-wheeler trailer. It's 53 feet long. Um, you would just do it in panels pretty much like wallpaper. Yeah. Uh, you just, you know, you you would just, you know, you probably have maybe uh, 10, 10 or 11 panels on the side of the trailer, um, you know, at 10 feet tall. And, I mean, it, it's really no limit of what you can do with it. I mean, you know, they they make bigger printers. They make all the way up to, you know, like a 100-inch printer um, that costs, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars. Um but I mean, buying a machine like that, unless you're doing like billboards or something like that, you really, for what we're doing, we don't need a machine that big. That's right. Uh, right. So we just pretty much got got what we needed. So, uh, but but yeah, you can you can uh, you know you can panel it out, or you know you can do just you know uh, long strips if you want to. But I mean, I don't see. I, I think that'd be kind of hard to handle a 53 foot sticker uh, as opposed to you know um, a four by ten. You know, right. panel it would be a lot easier. Talking with Chris Medley of Modern Images. Chris, there's there's people out there right now they are wondering how they can get a hold of you. Um how can they get a hold of you? Uh, well <laughs> you can you can give me a call at uh seven zero six six eight one four six six five. Um if we don't pick up your phone call, leave a voicemail. We'll get right back to you. Uh I always return phone calls. Um if that doesn't work, I've got a Facebook page. Um I've got one under Chris Medley one. And I also have one for the business. It's uh, Modern Images. Um, you can check either one of them out and message me or email me at um, modernimages1 at att.net. Um, 
we can get to you that way. And just you know, there's several different ways. Um, I travel around the southeast. Uh, I help a guy with uh, by the name of Levon Sparks. We don't run the crate series, but we do run super. And I do see a lot of the, the crate customers around, you know, and, and racers. Um, and like I said, we go to a lot of tracks that, that Neesmith uh, series sponsors. And, uh, I mean, you know, I'm there, you know, a lot of times you guys can come up and just, uh, just meet me there, you know. Well, we certainly t- uh, appreciate you for all you do for the series and appreciate you taking time out of your evening. I know you're a busy guy. Um, where are you gonna Where are you gonna end up next? What's your next race? I'm, we're, we're spoiled down here in the south with no snow on the ground. But what's your guys' <laughs> next race? Um, I really don't know. We're uh, we're actually trying to uh, trying to get the car together. We uh, we had some motor issues uh, last what was it last weekend at Phoenix City? Maybe uh, two weeks uh, ago. Two, oh, nearly, two, two yeah. weeks ago. Yeah, it was two, two weeks ago. Anyways, we uh, we had some motor issues and had to pull up the backup car. Um, and we were in the process of we were going to swap the cars and engines and everything. We actually had a big race coming up at Sonoa um, in the 1st of April. Um, we were trying to get a car ready for that and uh, and and trying to get the other supercar ready. I mean, we, we've got three cars that we run, uh, you know, and, and we're, we're trying to – I really don't know where the next race is going to be at, man. It's just, you know, flip a coin, let's go there, you know, with weather permitting. You hear lately the rain's been getting, you know, a lot of people. That's right. So, um, you know, it, it'd probably be Boyd's or, or, or something like that, you know. Uh, maybe even Dixie when they open up. We'll, I think we're going to run up there a pretty good bit. Um, you know, in Talladega. We, we we run a lot of local tracks. You know, every, everything's at least um, two hours for us minimum to travel to, you know, that runs super. So well, um, just just pretty much anywhere in the southeast. Well, certainly tell LeVon uh, good luck uh, on the early on the season for me and Roby, and uh, we'll talk at you down the highway, uh, Mr. Medley. All right, man. Well, I sure appreciate it. And, hey, I look forward to uh, doing more business with you guys, man. <laughs> right, it's, it's a great crew. We'll you send guys. it to you. Thanks a lot, Chris. Thanks, reach, buddy. We'll see you, Roby. You can reach Chris at 706-681-4665. That's 706-681-4665. Modern Images. Uh, he'll he'll do he'll do a good job for you. He's done a good job for us and several drivers uh, around the country. Well, Roby, we we we've uh, we've come to the end of overtime. We're, we're 15 minutes into overtime. How about that? I think that's good. Let's keep it going. Get had, better and better. That was a <laughs> so so. Smoke. And we're going to get busier and busier. <laughs> oh, I know. Now, this is just the the tip of the iceberg. Uh, once the once the weather breaks and and, and spring actually gets here. <clears throat> Uh, we may we may have to go up to three hour show, but I don't know if we could do a three hour show. That might be too much. The wives may get after us after the, after. Yeah, we might have to get some relief drivers in for us there on that. But uh, I'm looking forward to this weekend opening up the Neesmith Chevrolet Old Man's Garage Weekly Racing Series for the late models and the uh, Neesmith Performance Parts Street Stock Division National Points start this weekend. All gets underway with the late models at uh, Friday night at Hattiesburg Motorsports Park in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Then on Saturday night, Clay Hill Motorsports Park with the late models. Street stocks at Moulton Speedway in Moulton, Alabama. Late models and street stocks, St. Tammany Raceway in Lacombe, Louisiana. And the D. Smith Chevrolet Old Man's Garage Weekly Racing Series late models this Saturday night. Talladega Short Track, going to get it going. 27-week season. Starts this weekend. And you know it's going to be a blink of an eye. You know that, right, Roby? Once we get going, it's going to be a loud pedal to the end. It'll be a blur for all 27 weeks, but we'll be here to cover it for you. Something I forgot to mention at the beginning of the show. Uh, I got a call today from Navarre Press, Miss Gail Acosta. She is the mainstream media there in near near Milton, Florida, covering the Southern Raceway. She'll be down at Southern getting all the... So we actually got some press that's going to be at the weekly series track, so... Oh yeah, the Milton paper is going to be there too. They're going to get double coverage so, from, so, from Navarre and from the Milton paper. We certainly welcome that. I'm going to start a little information share with the with I guess both of them now. I'd like to thank our guests. I'd like to thank Jeff Andrew Lonis for coming on. Out of, he's from Bradford Speedway up in uh, Western New York. I'd like to thank Michael Arnold. Arnold. I can't do that. Michael Arnold, the 747 pilot out of out of Hattiesburg. Hattiesburg Hustler. <laughs> I'd like to thank Devin Nations. He's a street stock competitor. Um, that was a good interview. Chris Medley, of course, we just spoke with him. Uh, Modern Images, find him on Facebook. Uh, check him out for all your uh, 
Rap needs anything you guys need printed, signs. He does all our checks uh, and whatnot. Roby, uh, before I they say thank you to all the sponsors, anything in closing? Just go out and support your local racetracks this weekend, and uh, we'll talk to you again coming up on next Tuesday. I'd like to thank Neesmith out of Claxton, Georgia, Chevrolet Performance, Hoosier Racing Tire, Modern Images, Race Car Engineering, RockAuto.com, Bill Steen, and Headman Hustler Headers. We'll talk to you guys next week on the Neesmith Race Report, powered by the Old Man's Garage, Late Mile Chassis Parts Company. Peace out. <laughs>